So what does a day in the life of Matilda look like? It's very different depending on like, it's like a day-to-day kind of thing, but it's usually waking up, getting dressed, doing like a really quick makeup routine and hair routine, and then walking to the office. Um, it's, we basically do that every day. What time do you wake up? 5.30, 6. Wow, that's early. Yeah, we try I think <laughs> I wake up early, but that's very early. We try to be at the office at like 7 because wow. it's nice to like get an hour before everybody comes. So mm-hmm. in Sweden, it's really common to start at 8. Um, so we try to be there at 7, but it doesn't always work. I love how your photos look, and they just seem so effortless. Yeah. So I want to ask you about like what is your content taking process like? I mean, it's usually like pretty basic and simple. It's going to sound like a really boring, boring <laughs> answer, but it's usually just like walking to and from the office or like whenever I do something, I make sure to just, oh, Raz, can you just take a quick photo? So I never like plan an outfit and like think, okay, I need to go out and take a photo of it. I did before when I started out because that's when I lived in Burgos, which is a really small town. It was like, it was if, if it was one sunny day, like I had to shoot content because the other days I couldn't. So back then I would be more like, okay, I want to shoot these five outfits let's go ahead and do it now it's more like okay i'm walking to the office i'm wearing a really cute outfit like raz take a photo of me so it's pretty it's very it's just a little <laughs> quick and boring yeah. to be honest and you guys shoot everything on iphone yeah and then just like my film camera as well okay and then you don't filter you just no, never. post up the picture <laughs> yeah like sometimes if it's a really dark photo like i'll you know like pull up the exposure or like shadows in a photo but i don't use any filters um, or anything like that. I, okay, so if people want to take content similar to yours and they really like your style, any tips for them to kind of get your photos? Well, I think like because I don't use filters, it is obviously like important with the light. So I think that is something I think about even though like I don't plan a photo. It's more like if me and Ras are out, I'll be like take a photo and if the light sucks, I'll try to, you know, maybe just turn the other way. So I think that is really important if you want, especially with like an iPhone. Um, but other than that, just, you know, cliche but just like you know be yourself like I think that's what that's what you need to do like don't force anything and also don't force photos because I feel like people like the genuine like in the moment stuff. yeah how do you describe your personal style I get this question often and I'm always like I'm trying to f- find a really good answer for it but I think it's just like it's very comfortable like I'm all about being comfortable because if I'm comfortable I'm going to be confident um, whenever I put something on that I don't feel comfortable and I feel like I automatically feel really just like ugh. So I think it's like comfortable, pretty laid back, but with so like simple, but with a twist, um, I think. But it's hard. I love your style. (laughs) Yeah, it it is. And then I like how you mix like oversized pieces with either a fitted piece, like a dress underneath. But I also like how you wear oversized like tops with pants. How do you style that without feeling like overwhelming? Well, I mean... I feel like, especially like today, I'm wearing like oversized jeans with an oversized shirt. I like having my hair back so I don't feel like it's too much going on. Like that's one way. And also it's just like, it's so weird because I get this question a lot. Like, how do you wear oversized things? It's just like, I wear it. It's really comfortable. (laughs) I think it's more like putting it on and feeling confident, like really embracing the oversized style. I feel like I always have this example of my mom trying on a blazer and she like puts it on and then she's just like standing there like hunching forward, looking really sad. And I'm like, mom, put your shoulders back, like look confident. And that just, that's like the biggest difference I feel like. In addition to Jurif Avenue, where are some of your favorite places to shop for clothes? Oh, it's a really good question. I love like vintage shopping, like thrift shopping. Like I love designer vintage. It's my, oh, it's my weakness. I could spend so much money on it, but I have to like stop myself. But I also love like thrifting. Um, but other than that, what kind of brands do I like? I, I've like thought about this lately. Yeah. And I'm like, hmm. Um, like Urs and Iris, probably pronouncing so that wrong, but love them. I love Lana, the owner. She's the sweetest. Um, what other brands do I love? For vintage shopping designer stuff online, is there anywhere you like to go? I love Etsy. Oh, wow. I know. It's really random. I've recently found that I can find really good designer stuff there, especially shoes. I found one pair of shoes on there yeah. and I was surprised because I was looking for these. It, they were Chanel clear yeah. like heels and I was looking for them everywhere and yeah. they happened to have them on Etsy yeah. and it was one place. And so now I need to go on there and then just putting yourself out there on Instagram and starting a brand. Those things can be like really scary for people. Yeah. Usually, did you have any fears when you wanted to put yourself out there? Take this new leap in your journey? Honestly, I think I'm pretty fearless in that sense like I don't really care what people think about me and especially growing up like Burros is where I come from it's a really small town so people definitely you know like talked about me they made fun of me and all of that but I was like okay why are you making fun of me literally I'm like doing what I love this one guy so I worked with a brand called Bali Buddy I didn't work with them I just like purchased from them and like I posted and then this guy he was like three years older than me he 
per, which is funny. I think he like actually purchased the same bottle to take photos and make fun of me. So like one time at a party, I brought a bottle to him. I gave it to him. I said, hi, like use this for your next photo. And he was just like, ah. Oh. <laughs> so that's I think. That's so weird. Yeah. So that's kind of like growing up in a small town, like mm -hmm. a bunch of stuff like that has happened. But that has never made me like not want to do it. I think that has just confirmed that while I'm doing something right, yeah i think a lot of girls now they're aspiring to be influencers yeah. and they get really shy about putting themselves yeah. out there and you were so confident to do it regardless of what people think but they do have people in their lives yeah. whether it's friends or peers who are yeah. picking on them for doing this exactly. do you have any advice for them how to you know go forward with this because if it's something you really want to do exactly i think it's like if it makes you feel good do it don't care about what other people say people will, there will always be small-minded people around you but i think it's just so important to let those people be like white noise focus on yourself focus on what you love and let all of that other negativity just be white noise honestly i know because at the end of the day like if you if it becomes your career and yeah. you're so happy then they're gonna want you because they want you to go post exactly. something for them <laughs> exactly and life is honestly too short to not try things out like life is fun it's supposed to be fun and i think it's just important to step out of your comfort zone as well Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to the Dear Media YouTube channel for more videos.